What's up everyone? Coming at you today with some updates on my fragrance collaboration with Aaron Terence Hughes and I'll let you know what it's called. Stay tuned. It's been a little while since I've spoken to you about my fragrance and many of you in the comments are always asking me when's it going to be released, what's it going to be like, how much will it cost, so I'm going to try and answer a few of those questions in this video for you. If you didn't know, Aaron Terence Hughes is a perfumer but he also has his own YouTube channel where he reviews fragrances. I'll leave a link to his channel in the description below this video. So we wanted to make a few more of these update videos but because of the current virus situation we've just not been able to. I wanted to go to the lab and I wanted to get hands on and um, try a few different formulas, try some different notes, just get an idea of, of what works. I really wanted to be as hands on as possible. Unfortunately I've not been able to go to the lab, I've not been able to film update videos with Aaron. As you can see, these are all the submissions that we've got so far. We've got seven um, submissions so far. I think there will be more there will be more to come. The dialogue between Aaron and I has been constant. It's almost every day. We're talking about how we feel about the current submissions. Aaron also, he feels, is, uh, is learning a lot in terms of the direction in perfumery that he's taking because he's trying to create a fragrance that is more me than him. Obviously, it's gonna be a bit of both of us in there and Aaron has the, the expertise, but he wants to make a fragrance that is what I want, not what he wants. So he's quite enjoying the approach that he's creating it for somebody else and it's made him think differently about the structure of fragrances, um, trying new raw materials, sourcing different materials that he's never worked with before and so far I think Aaron has made something that is exactly as he wants it to be, different to his usual style. It's definitely more me, so he's really he's really doing a great job of creating a fragrance that is something that, that I would love, which is exactly what it should be for this collaboration. If you watched the previous video where Aaron and I were talking about a mood board that I'd created of images and given to Aaron as a starting point, then you'll have an idea of a few of the notes that we were throwing around and that we were that we were talking about. I just wanted to let you know where the inspiration came from, where my starting point was for creating this fragrance. I didn't just want to create a fragrance just full of all notes that I love because I think that would have just been a little bit clinical. I wanted to get some heart in there and I wanted to really make it a piece of me and I wanted it to be very connected with me, with my history and some of my, my loved ones. So the starting point for this fragrance uh, actually was a memory of me visiting my nana and granddad's house. They lived opposite the school that I went to and I used to most days go over to their house and uh, have some snacks and watch some TV, play some games and just spend time with them really until my mum came and picked me up when she finished her job. So I was at their house a lot and there are certain things about my memory of going around there that I, I wanted to use as a starting point. They're long gone now, unfortunately. One of the things that I think about is my love of tobacco and the sweet cherry pipe tobacco. My granddad used to smoke a pipe. So if you know me, you know that uh, it, I was always gonna have tobacco in this fragrance. They used to have one of those uh, leather horseshoe things on the wall, which I always remember very vividly. So I definitely wanted to have some leather in this fragrance. I think leather is, is a beautiful note in in perfumery. They had furniture which was quite old furniture and old furniture with the particular finish that it has on to me has this kind of balsamic sweet woody resinous balsamic smell so I knew that I, I wanted that. I felt like I wanted a bit of citrus in there as well so I wanted to use this lovely memory that I have of my nano and granddad's house to be a starting point. I didn't want the fragrance to be a photo realistic recreation of my memory of the, the smells that I had in their house because it, it was basically a, an old person's house really so I didn't really want the fragrance to smell dated or anything like that but I wanted the starting point for this process to come from the heart to come from a really um, cherished place emotionally for me and when I smell little bits of nuances that are in 
this fragrance or, or these these different submissions it's it's more just for me personally that i know that's why that is in there that's why the tobacco is in there that's why there's a bit of citrus so let me read out the list of notes that are so far in this fragrance it may change we've still got some ways to go and i'll talk about when we're intending to release this um, in a little while but so far in the fragrance we've got notes of sandalwood bergamot patchouli cardamom benzoin vanilla neroli incense smoke ambergris and tobacco of course all right now i'm sure you're dying to know what i'm calling this fragrance i've been sitting on this name now for a few weeks I was racking my brains, I was brainstorming different names. I wanted a name that almost had a dual meaning. I wanted it to really represent the, the type of scent that it was, but I also wanted to try and find a name that not only matched with the structure and the composition, but I wanted it to connect with how it might make someone feel whilst wearing this fragrance. So I wanted people to look at the name of this fragrance and think, okay, this is something I can put on and feel emboldened, feel empowered. Uh, you know those fragrances that just give you that little bit of extra confidence. Uh, you walk into a room and you know people are gonna smell it and notice it and think, well, what, what's that smell? Who's just walked into, into this room? So I wanted it to be um, quite commanding and assertive, but I also wanted it to be elegant and subtle. So I didn't want it to be beast mode. I didn't want it to be obnoxious in any way, but I just wanted it to be a scent that would really give someone bit of extra confidence. I'm not gonna keep you in suspense any longer. I'll tell you what it's called. The name of my fragrance is Smolder. I'll put it up on screen so you can see how it's spelled. And I will also flash up the dictionary definitions and I'll explain why I've, I've chosen this name. First of all, in terms of the composition and in terms of how this smells, when something smolders, it's when something burns slowly without flame. So when you get that smoldering smoke uh, burning in a fire, and this really fits perfectly because it's got this amazing, um, slightly smoky, burning, incense quality, which I've never smelled in a fragrance before, actually. Aaron has done something fantastic with this. He's somehow captured something really magical, and that was in the very first submission. So it has this sweet, smoky, woody, smoldering accord, which is just fantastic. Mixing with the incense and the leather and the tobacco, sandalwood smoothing things out, so it's a very smooth fragrance. It's not like Imaginary Authors A City On Fire, which is perhaps a little more challenging, a little more divisive, and that's not a sweet fragrance. This one has beautiful sweetness to it. We've got some vanilla, we've got some natural vanilla in here, and some benzoin. So it really reminds me of um, the style of perfumery of, of Roger Dove, perhaps. I think it's probably closest to that, just from things that come to mind, which, which is perfect because I'm a big fan of Roger's fragrances, Enigma in particular. And the other use of the word smolder is when you refer to a smoldering look. If you've ever seen the, the two newest Jumanji films with The Rock in, his character has this special power where he has a smoldering look. And when he looks at anyone using that smoldering look, they instantly just go weak at the knees because it's just a, a look of intensity and emotional heat. So I wanted people to wear this fragrance and feel confident, feel empowered, feel like they can walk into a room and you know when you've got your best mate with you, when you've got your wingman and he's got your back, should have called it Maverick. Anyway, um, kind of like that. I want you to feel that this fragrance has got your back. I want you to feel like it's your companion. I think any good fragrance does that. When I wear some of my favorite fragrances, I feel like I've got a wingman with me, just helping me out a little bit. Maybe that's just me. Anyway, I wanted people to wear this so they could feel more confident, they could feel empowered, they could feel like they could walk into a room and smolder with emotional heat. Um, so I just thought, I, I settled on that name. I sat on it for a little while and I told Aaron and he liked it and as we were talking back and forth and we were using the name of the fragrance, the more he said it, the more I said it, the more I, I started to think, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying this name. I, I think it works out really well. So there it is. The fragrance is called Smolder. Let me talk to you about the different submissions that we have here. So this is the, the very first submission, which I really enjoyed. It might be that we end up coming back to this or a variation of this first submission because it is very good stuff. It's very, very potent stuff. The first submission I'd say is the most potent 
of all of these. I took this a few weeks ago to my brother-in-law's house and I videoed him smelling this fragrance. So I'm just going to show you a little video clip of Mass smelling Smolder for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. What, what is it? What are you smelling? It's the chocolate. That's yeah. just so nice. It's not offensive. But like I say, it's got that enigma sort of initial yeah. blast. Oh, that's a really nice. Really nice. You getting any of the incense out of it? Not you might do more on skin. On skin, not on skin Oh god, that's completely different on there. That is some that is strong. That's leathery. It's woody. Leather and wood. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Sandalwood. Yeah. Incense, vanilla. Yeah, yeah. The chocolate off the bottle, but as soon as it hits, it's a completely different projection on that on the on the. Yeah. The leather's there. Yeah. Because really on the, off the off the sprayer, you're getting more of the dry down. Yeah. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah. So the chocolate will come after. Yeah. Yeah. That's. So Mass really loved the fragrance, he thought it was perfect, he didn't think it needed any tweaks or changes, but I just wanted to try a few more things just to experiment with some different ideas. So one of the things I said to Aaron was, could we maybe try and make it a little sweeter and creamier, a little more full bodied, just to see if that would have any effect. And the other thing I wanted to try was create more projection because this one, to me, acts very much like your typical parfum fragrance, your high quality, high concentration parfum. So it sits on the skin, it's got this heavy base and it lasts and lasts. It does project, but it's not projecting massively like you might get with an eau de toilette or an eau de parfum. But the fragrance notes, the what is the heart of this fragrance just sits beautifully on the skin for a really long time until you wash it off basically it's it's very long lasting so i wanted to try and uh, and see if we could keep that keep that parfum characteristic on the skin in terms of how long lasting it is and how rich it was but have some more uplifting notes uh, for the first hour or so. So we experimented with a few things. One idea that I had that Aaron was also thinking of at the same time was adding some cherry in that. So this one has an added cherry top note and we also tried one with cherry and rum. So this one is, is cherry and rum. And these were, these were really nice. I felt we did lose a little bit of that richness in the base. And also the cherry, Whilst I liked it, I thought people may have associations perhaps a little bit with um, like a cough medicine type of, type of smell. So I think we both decided that we were not going to continue down the path of adding the cherry and I don't think we needed the rum in there either. The next three submissions, Aaron has changed his direction a little bit. He started to work with some different raw materials. He feels like he's working in a more kind of classical French way in terms of perfumery and he's he's learned some new techniques and he's really he's really been enjoying it. What I would say about these last three and these latest submissions is whilst I think they're perhaps a little more mass appealing and they do have a little more lift and they're a little sweeter. Again, they don't have the, the lasting power on the skin of this lovely, beautiful, rich, gorgeous first submission. And it's that sweet smokiness and incense that this one really impresses me with. So where we're at at the moment is, I've got to do more testing. This is just some initial thoughts. So I'm gonna spend more time with all of these, testing them off strips, testing them off skin, and really uh, try to decide what characteristics I want Smolder to have. I do want it to have that lovely smouldering quality that this first submission has. Really does just sit on the skin beautifully. Maybe we'll try it with some more lift and some more diffusive top notes so we get a bit more projection in the first hour or two of the fragrance. It might not need that, but it's just something to try. So that's where we're at at the moment. I just wanted to give you a bit of an update in terms of how it's progressing. I wanted to let you know that Aaron and I are having uh, an almost daily dialogue about this fragrance. We've also talked about when to release it and whether we should wait until 
the COVID-19 crisis has settled down a little bit. So we have to decide whether we're going to do a soft launch online some point over the summer, probably, and this will coincide with new packaging that Aaron is having. So um, Smolder, I don't think will be released in Aaron's current presentation. I think it will be his new packaging, which looks really nice. But one thing we really wanted to do was launch this with some live events, either in the UK, maybe in the US because Aaron can now ship to, to the US and we wanted to have a live event where we could invite people and we could just chat and have a good time and everyone could try the fragrance and we wanted to show a little documentary so we wanted to have a film of the process. I think we are still going to try and get together and film some, some stuff, film Aaron and I talking about the development of Smolder and how we eventually arrived at the final one. So we have to decide whether we just want to launch it online or whether we want to coincide the launch with the live events. If that's the case, then the launch would probably not happen until next year. And I know Aaron and I are quite excited and quite eager to get it out there. So we might just do an online launch and then maybe do some live events either in the UK or the US or maybe even both at some point next year because I think it'd be great to uh, to get a few people together, have a gathering of people to, to smell the fragrance and talk about it and show a little bit of footage of Aaron and I talking about the process of the fragrance. In terms of the price, it always just has to be a fair reflection of the materials involved in the fragrance. But we have to think about balancing this out with what is affordable for people. At the moment, we're in a place where we're looking at something between 100 and 120 pounds for 50 mil of fragrance. That may change, maybe it'll go up, maybe it'll go down, but based on the current materials that have been used, that would be a fair reflection of the price. So we'll see by the time we get to the end of this journey, it may have changed, but that's where we're currently at. So there we go. Smolder will be coming to you soon. I'm very proud to be able to say that. Very excited to be able to sit here and tell you the name. Now, it's like naming a kid, isn't it? It's like naming your child. Everyone's got a different opinion on what's a good name and what isn't because we all call our children different names, don't we? So not everyone is going to hear this name and instantly think, wow, this, wow it's the best name. It's the, you know, it takes a little bit of time, but that's what it is. It will be called Smolder. Smolder will be uh, available for you to purchase, hopefully at some point this year. And I think that name just sums up the fragrance for me. I think it really reflects the fragrance itself and it also reflects how I would like people to feel when they wear the fragrance. So there we go. There are the latest updates. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any other questions that I've not covered in this video, feel free to throw some comments below the video and I'll do my best to answer as many of those questions as possible. I'm excited for this to, to get out there. I'm excited for people to start smelling it. I'm really loving where we're at with this. I love that Aaron has taken a different direction to his usual stuff. I love it. I love what he's created so far. I think he's enjoying the process of creating something for somebody else as well. Okay, so there we go. I hope that answers a few of the questions that some of you may have had. I'll keep you informed on any updates and developments down the line as they happen. I hope you found that interesting. I've enjoyed talking to you about it. Thank you for watching everybody. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good.